a six-year-old boy was shot in the back as his mother drove him to kindergarten. You ever wonder why bad things happen to good people? Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Espresso with Sky, where you'll get a fresh perspective on faith, life, God, and the Bible. I am Pastor Sky, and these are my sidekicks, Chewy and John Wick. Now, if you haven't done so, go ahead, hit the subscribe, like, all those weird buttons. But the most important thing is, please leave a comment below to feed the algorithm. Yes, write to me what your honest opinion is, so we can have an honest conversation after this topic. Now, if you want to support this ministry, go ahead, we got PayPal and buymeacoffee.com. Yep, you can just buy me a cup of coffee, all right? So, let's get into today's topic. When you read the Bible, you will see the most righteous and great people of God go through the most horrendous and terrible types of sufferings, tribulations, and difficulty. Look at Job. He loses everything, including his children. And then he even gets like these boils on his skin that like blood and pus just squirt out. You have Apostle Paul flogged like 195 times. He was stoned and beaten. And of course, the greatest of all, you have Jesus. And Jesus was nailed to a cross after he was beaten, flogged, whipped, and ridiculed by people. Now, these are righteous and good people, and they're all going through this terrible suffering. Now, if I want to be a good person of God and a righteous person, does that mean I have to go through the same things? Like, why do such bad things happen to good people? It almost feels like it's better to be bad. Now let's look at three reasons why bad things happen to good people, all right? And the first one's the easiest one, and it is sin. Even though we're good, we're not perfect, we do make mistakes, and we do sin. So in the Bible, as people who are of faith, we do believe that eventually if there's unrepented sins, eventually God renders judgment. And we see it all over the Bible too, in large ways, like for instance, Sodom and Gomorrah, Adam and Eve, um, King Saul, was t the kingship was taken away from him because he disobeyed God, or even King David, righteous person, but what happens to him? He loses his son because he committed adultery with Bathsheba. So we see that sin and judgment is something that we believe in and we understand and a lot of times these bad things happen to righteous people because we've sinned you know I said we because I'm a righteous person too <laughs> yeah number two ignorance now a lot of the suffering that we go through in life isn't just because of sin a lot of it is because we just don't know as it says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Yes, we do things without knowing and it causes us suffering. I'll give you one thing that happened to my baby cousin. There was water boiling, my aunt was making pasta, and he goes up and he grabs it and the boiling water falls on his arms and his face. Now, is he a wicked child? And the answer is absolutely not. What was he? He just made a mistake because of ignorance, not knowing that this was boiling water that would actually hurt him, right? A lot of babies do bad things, not because they are wicked, it's mainly because they don't know. And in life too, we do make a lot of mistakes at work, at school, you know, at home. It's not so much because we're trying to be bad people, it's just because we don't know. We go through parenthood for the first time and we're like, Oh, I don't know what to do here. And we make mistakes. You know, we go to work for the first time, not knowing how to do the job. And sometimes they leave you alone. You're like, what do I do? But I feel really embarrassed. I shouldn't ask someone. And then you make a big mistake and you suffer for it. The second reason why bad things happen to good people is because ignorance. We just don't know. Now, the third and last reason why bad things happen to good people is because Righteous people are living in a wicked world. Now, what does that mean? It means that when we look for righteousness as people who believe in God, it's we're looking for the righteous who are those that have faith, that really revere God and want to follow His will. We might make mistakes, but overall, we're trying to make this heaven on earth. But that's not the case. We're living in a world where most of the people don't want to believe in God, and most of the people just want to do what they want. And what happens is, as a righteous person lives in this world, we go through suffering because of those around us that are not righteous. So what does that mean? 
if someone mugs you, if someone steals stuff from you, if someone lies and cheats on, on an interview or an exam and wins over you, what happens? We're suffering not because of what we did, it's because we're living in this type of a world. Someone can murder, someone can cheat, beat someone up, they can, you know, they can steal all their things, they can lie to gain an advantage over you, and that has nothing to do with the righteous person, like, it's, it's not like they deserve it, it's just we're living in this type of a world. If I were to give you a better example, it would be like, oh, in America, I'm not sure in other parts of the world, we have something called an innocent bystander, right? Innocent bystander basically means the person who is in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, example is, imagine you go to a, a neighborhood that is just terribly ridden with crime. Like murder and all these, like stealing and all these crimes are all over this one neighborhood. And even if you have a righteous person in there, because they're living amongst all that wickedness that's happening, what happens? Well, an innocent bystander is like this. Two rival gangs are shooting at each other and there's someone there in the wrong place at the wrong time and gets shot and killed. They had nothing to do with this rival gang war. They had nothing to do with this wickedness and evil, and yet they're just there in the wrong place at the wrong time, living in a bad area. And what happens? They get affected too. And even if they're not affected by that directly, think about this. If it's a dangerous neighborhood, how many people want to move there? How safe is it? When would you go out? You don't have the freedom to do the things that you want, so you're already affected by these things. Ultimately, when we're looking at all these righteous people in the Bible, Jesus, Paul, the disciples, all the great prophets and the kings, they were basically living a life sacrificing for those that were unrighteous, right? It's just like Jesus. Jesus died on behalf of the sinners. So he took the sins upon him so that they can live. And I would say this is one of the things that we're called to do. Yeah, we are living in an unrighteous world. But we are called and we are saved, which means what? It means that we are the ones that are supposed to take on the burden so that others may live. We've already received salvation, which means for us, what do we do next? We have to take the burden so the world can be saved. I'll give you this last example. Parents and children. You know, when parents and children fight and they're like, rah, 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 you know, there's a certain point where the parents know that they're right. Just because they have more experience and they've been through it already, the, the kid's like, no, I want to do this. And he's like, hey, it's not very good. And the parents know they're right. The children think they're right. But what eventually is going to happen? It's going to reach this, like, this terrible point where either the child has to be right and it's settled there, or the child cut the relationship and never talk to their parents again. And when a parent sees this, what did the parent usually do? Well, the parent, you know, parenting is not about being right. Parenting is about the relationship between your, you and your child. And the parent has to think to themselves at that point, is it worth it? Is this relationship worth it? Just so I can be right? Or should I just bite the bullet and sacrifice for this child so that the relationship can remain? Because think about this. If you don't have a relationship, they'll never talk to you again. They'll, they'll, there'll be no second chance. But if you sacrifice for that one moment, what happens? The relationship goes on and eventually that child will realize they were wrong and they'll draw closer to you in the future. What do parents do? They sacrifice for their children so that, why? It's for the relationship so that they can have this close bond together, this father and child, mother and child relationship that's supposed to last for the rest of their lives. In the same way too, as righteous people, what are we supposed to do? We're not the ones who are judging the people. We're the ones who are here that God has called to save them. And what do we need to do? In this world, we need to take on their burdens, right? And we have to be the ones that sacrifice to save people instead. And that's what we see happening all over the Bible with these great and righteous people. All right, guys. All right, so that is the end of today's topic of why bad things happen to good people. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed this, uh, this conversation and topic too. And I hope you guys had a good time. Please drop your comments below if you agree or disagree or have something to add. That'd be great. Or some scriptures. I would love to see some scriptures too. And that means we are done. If you are really inspired, go ahead you can support our ministry on paypal or buymeacoffee.com everyone have an awesome day my name is pastor sky and over here is chewy and
John Wick. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. We'll see you guys again. Bye-bye.